Hey man, saw your vid on DUP. Super confusing. I think I'll just keep getting bigger and strong with 5x5. Thanks for sharing. Just seems like training should be all about them gains. 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 Not about all that science, man. Wait, who are you again? What the? You don't know who I am? I'm Brotastic, man! Sorry, didn't know. Dude, that's cold. Well, I'm glad you saw the vid. As it turns out, there's actually a few things that I need to update. Wait, you mean I wasted my time even trying to understand that garbage? No, 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 no. The principles are fine. It's just some of the stuff that I said about sarcoplasmic and myofibrillar hypertrophy that need to be updated. Some of the science is not as conclusive as I originally thought it was. And after I did some more research, I learned a few things. Wait, what? Well, what happened was when I did my initial research, it came up and everything I was looking at was talking about these different types of hypertrophy. But it's not even in a completely accepted theory. It's more of just a hypothesis about why the muscles of bodybuilders are so much bigger than the muscles of powerlifters, where powerlifting muscle is smaller but stronger and bodybuilding muscle, bodybuilder's muscle, is usually bigger but not quite as strong as far as the cross-sectional area. And what they said is the sarcoplasm, which contains non-contractile material, um, was gaining in size and not the, you know, myofibular type 1, type 2 uh, muscle fibers. And that's what they were saying. And that's the research I had. But people said, nah, that's just a hypothesis. There's actually a lot of other really good explanations for why that might be the case. And so I need to talk about those. One would be neurological adaptation. Wait, what? Really what it comes down to is the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy was based on a study from a guy that was doing it on rats. I don't care about no rats. Let's just talk about gym rats, in which case I'm a prime specimen. Look at them babies. Some people came to me and said that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy was actually a pretty controversial topic. Bet you cuss those nerds out like the poindexters they are. No, why would I do that? Because they disagreed with you online. Everyone knows that that means you start cussing them out, you say they're ignorant, they don't know what they're talking about, you got other studies that you're not going to tell them about, but other studies that show that you're right, they're wrong, they don't know nothing, they should just go back home and sleep and just die. You got to throw down, man, you got to throw the F-bombs in there, you got to use all kinds of four-letter words, four-letter word games, four-letter word games, four-letter word games, that's what I'm talking about. Ain't nobody call you out online, you got to tell those posers what's up. Cause you ain't never wrong when you online. Well, I just saw them as trying to help me get better information so that everybody on YouTube could be smarter and do better. I didn't really take offense at it. F that man, I'm never wrong cause I got my knowledge gains in the gym. Five by five, die, die, die. Bro, chill out man. Anyways, after I did my research, I found out that there were actually a few changes to the sarcoplasm that actually has some basis in science. I was reading out of the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist textbook and it was talking about how the density of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and some of the other elements in that actually increase when doing three to five sets of uh, eight to twelve reps with two minute rests. In fact, there's stuff that's in the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum that's what lets the nutrients get in to the muscle fibers for protein synthesis and uh, it transports all sorts of stuff. In fact, it transports glucose, which is used for ATP production, which is energy production. Whoa, man, sacro rectum? I don't know what you're talking about. So what the problem is, is they don't know if you can target specifically the non-contracting material that supports myofibular hypertrophy. Huh? Well, myofibular refers to the hypertrophy of the parts of your muscle that actually contract it. Huh? It's the stuff that lets you move, that contracts so you can move your muscles, man. Come on. Oh, we'll just say that. So anyways, what the research is looking at more and more, the more recent research, it's saying that it's not so much about 1 to 3 rep range, 8 to 12 rep range, and 1 to 3 hits myofibular and 8 to 12 hits uh, sarcoplasmic. The 1 to 3 rep range is helping with neurological adaptation because you're having to turn on all your muscle to lift that weight because it's really heavy. Um, but that's going to happen with the 8 to 12 too. You're still going to have both types of hypertrophy all the time. 
And in fact, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy might not even be a real thing. It might be genetically determined. What does seem to be the case is that the amount of volume you do directly relates to how much hypertrophy you have. And so, if you do more volume, which is easier to do if you're doing sets of 8 to 12, because it just doesn't take as long to get a lot of volume in that way, you're going to have more muscle growth, but that muscle growth might be faster than your neurological adaptation. And so you may not be able to lift as much with your muscles because it's not adapted properly. However, once you get a bigger muscle with more cross-sectional area, when you do neurologically adapt and train that muscle, you're going to have a higher absolute base of strength. So what I'm hearing you say is that you're an idiot. And those people that called you out were right. And everything in your program that you're talking about was wrong. You're talking about 1x3s, 6x5s, talking about 8x12s. Look, man, it's all about the 5x5 five five or die. No, not at all. DUP is a great way to both add cross-section to the muscle because you've got those higher rep ranges with more volume and still train that muscle you're building with neurological adaptation so that you can recruit all of that muscle fiber at once with high frequency so that you can lift heavy weight in a one rep max scenario. I know what you're really trying to do. You're trying to keep everybody off them gains so you can win all the competitions. You're a jerk, man. Bro, I already know you're trying to steal my gains so you can go Peace out. Okay, well, Blessings, man. I'll see you around. Now that bro is gone, I want to say that not all rep ranges do exactly the same thing. All contribute to hypertrophy to a degree, but some allow you to get in far more volume faster. I think I was watching a video with uh, Jason Blaha where he said, you know, it's the most, you know, volume bang for your minute, pretty much. is You can get more reps per minute, that is. It is probable that sarcoplasmic size versus myofibular size in the muscle is genetically determined but some research shows that it's possible to have adaptations in both areas as the results of strength training, especially the presence of glucose. This is a study where after five months of bodybuilding style training, you know, like three to five sets of eight to 10 reps with two minutes rest, people were able to increase their glucose almost double to what it was before they were training. And so this shows that there may be sarcoplasmic changes going on with bodybuilding style sets. In fact, it would be that eight to 12 rep range because glycolysis is going to happen when you're doing an exercise for more than 30 seconds. But if you're doing a one rep max, that's going to be like 10 seconds maximum. Probably less than that, like four to five. And even three rep sets are sometimes under 10 seconds long. There you're going to be recruiting your ATP through phosphogenesis, not glycolysis primarily. Um, and the need for extra glycogen to be fed through the system so that it can break down and give you more ATP is not as necessary. Fast photogenesis and fast glycolysis are just different ways of obtaining energy at different times, and they require slightly different pathways. Again, research hasn't been conclusive one way or the other. What we do know is we can see the results of certain types of training, and we know that the volume is directly related to increases in size, and the intensity is directly uh, related to increases in strength. Why exactly that is? Jury's still out. But what we do know is that training protocols like DUP that include both are a good way to make sure that you are a well-rounded athlete instead of having a bunch of muscle that you can't do anything with or having some muscle that you can do a whole lot with but you're only, you know, 130 pounds. Again, I've caught some flack for saying it's bad to be 130. I don't think that. I'm just saying if you could be 180 and lift double what you could at 130 because you have a bunch more muscle, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, maybe somebody has a reason but it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.